Hi, I'm Mina, and I'm going to share with you today our experience at XWP of uh, customizing Gutenberg core blocks to add AMP features. So, uh, Gutenberg, uh, well, Gutenberg is definitely new editing and also development experience. And I read through a bunch of plugin reviews out of interest in the WordPress repo, and it seems to be kind of a love-hate thing going on there with uh, Gutenberg. And <clears throat> one of the notes that I've seen also is that uh, people mentioning that it's not very developer-friendly, and I've also seen a few notes about unsuccessful attempts to customize the editor. So I can imagine, yeah, it can be definitely quite frustrating or at least challenging to having to learn a completely new thing when you have already gotten so used to something else. And this talk is going to be quite developer focused. I'm going to show some code examples. And I hope that at least some of you who are interested in developing on Gutenberg will get some useful information. So at XWP, we were also facing a challenge um, when developing the official AMP for WordPress plugin to build in AMP support. And well, we wanted to build in Gutenberg support from as early as possible so that once Gutenberg actually gets merged to core, which happened yesterday, then the plugin would work right away. And a few notes here. So first of all, I'd like to mention that the presentation that I'm making today is just a tiny part of the AMP for WordPress plugin. There's a lot more to it than just adding AMP features to Gutenberg. And second point that since, well, Gutenberg still seems to be evolving, then this is not necessarily final or ultimate truth of how to extend Gutenberg blocks. I also had to redo a few slides a few times after updates. Um, but it, it is a practical example of how we managed at XWP to add custom features to core blocks. So a few words about AMP. Probably most of you are familiar with AMP. As, um, as it's stated on the AMP website, then AMP is an open source initiative, the goal to make the web better for everyone. And AMP basically consists of three core components, the optional AMP um, cache, AMP JavaScript, and AMP HTML. And the most relevant part for Gutenberg blocks is AMP HTML. So a few, uh, a little bit about AMP HTML to give you some background of um, what we needed to change and what we wanted to achieve with extending the blocks. So what's the difference between HTML and AMP HTML? Uh, AMP HTML, it is basically HTML, but it has some restrictions, meaning that some of the tags are not allowed. And it also has some custom elements, some of them to add new features, and some of them to replace the restricted elements. So here are a few examples. For example, the default image tag is not allowed, but this is replaced with AMP image. Exactly the same goes for video. Video tag is not allowed, but it is, uh, there is a custom element AMP video. Uh, so here are two examples of uh, new custom elements by AMP, uh, AMP fit text. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this later as well because one of the code examples is based on that. The other is AMP Facebook. There are tens of more of um, AMP elements. These are just a few examples. And also related, AMP has also custom attributes. Some of them are meant for using specifically with AMP components, but some of them can be used with almost any default HTML tag as well. So uh, the goal of the AMP for WordPress plugin is to help making a WordPress website AMP compatible and also provide AMP specific features for the editor. And a brief overview of we, what we needed to achieve with the plugin. So first of all, in case of the forbidden HTML elements, we either needed to remove them or if possible replace by allowed elements for example, a good example is um, the image tag. It's not allowed, so we would replace that with AMP image. And this part is actually uh, mostly automatically done by the plugin already. 
So this is not so much user-facing in Gutenberg Editor. The next part is to add um, new AMP features. And this is now the place where the editor becomes relevant since um, that's where the user can actually choose if they do want AMP features or if they don't want to. So we wouldn't just randomly add AMP features to a website where we think that it would be awesome. Um, so the editor gets to decide if they do want to use them or don't want to use. And also related to the previous two points, we also wanted to add um, controls to the editor so that they could modify the AMP attributes. So uh, why go through the trouble of extending core blocks at all? Like in theory, we could basically just create new blocks for absolutely everything. We found that it makes more sense to actually reuse and extend existing editor blocks. Uh, for example, in our case, what we actually wanted was to have, so to say, customized or enhanced uh, versions of the existing blocks with optional AMP settings. Um, and from a user exper experience perspective, it's uh, very important not to overload the inserter and du duplicating blocks. So, for example, let's say there is an AMP component for Lightbox, it's called AMP Lightbox, and this is basically an image with Lightbox effect. So let's say that um, if you extend the blocks, then you could just use the already existing image block and just tag a control so the editor can choose, okay, I do want the light box effect or I don't want. If you would create a new block, then the user would have to remove the image block, add the AMP light box block, then configure it. And if they would think that, mm, actually, I don't want it, I just want to link my image, then they would have to go through all this switching back blocks again. So now to the code part. So the code examples that I'm going to show you, they are simplified examples. For example, if, um, if we actually added five settings to a block, then I'm just going to show you one because, well, all the settings are added quite in a similar way. And I'm also going to repeat quite a lot of stuff. Um, at first, when I was creating the slides, I was thinking that, okay, I'm just going to show the, so to say, unique parts, not to, for the people to get too bored. But fortunately, my colleagues at the XWP were willing to listen to the talk a few weeks ago. And I actually received the feedback that it's great if there are repetitions, because you can actually see that we are extending all the blocks kind of with the same base logic. So a little bit about the filters that we mostly used uh, for extending the core blocks in AMP for WordPress plugin. Uh, filters are basically a great way to sort of say hook your own code into someone else's code. Um, well, in case if the developer has thought that maybe someone wants to do it and add filters for it. And this is fortunately the case for WordPress and also the Gutenberg editor. So we mainly used uh, four filters. The first one is called blocks register block type. And this allows you to hook into the moment where the block type is getting registered. So you can configure all the settings there. And what you do here is not going to be directly visible to the user, by the way. The uh, second filter is blocks get save element. And this is now for filtering what gets saved into the post content for this for a specific block. So this obviously means that whatever change you make here, yes, the user is going to see that. The third block, editor block edit, this is for filtering all the visual part of the Gutenberg editor. So using this, we would add the controls, we would um, change the behavior controls, and we would also uh, filter how the block is actually displayed inside the editor. And the fourth one that we used is uh, get save content extra props. And this is also for filtering what gets saved into the post content. But this is now not filtering the whole block, it's just filtering the attributes. So let's say we would want to add, I don't know, inline style for a paragraph, whatever, then this is a filter we could use. 
And let's now get to the actual code examples as well. So the first example is about uh, AMP component called AMP fit text. And what it does is it basically uh, shrinks or expands its text content to match the space that it has. So you can assign minimum font size to it, you can assign maximum font size to it, and it's going to respect those font sizes, but take as much room as possible in the container that it has. And here is an example of how the Amphit text looks like. So here we have set minimum font size, maximum font size, and height. And we have wrapped this around a heading three. And this now is how it actually looks like in the source code after AMP has done its magic. So for example, we set the maximum font size to 80, but the actual font size is going to be a size 68. This is how it looks like in the front end. So this is 2017 theme. Above, there is heading one, and below there is heading three. As you can see, the heading three is much larger. Originally, it's not much larger, but we wrapped it inside Amphit text, and we gave it a lot of space, and now that's the font size. So here, what we wanted to do was to add the controls for the user to opt in for using the Amphit text, and also for modifying all the relevant attributes. And then we would want to wrap the original content inside the Amphit text. And this is um, what we want to achieve. So this is the block sidebar. As you can see, we have added AMP settings for Amphit text. And I'm going to show you this example based on a heading. All right? So the first thing we need to do is to register the settings. And for that, we use the filter register block type that I mentioned before. Here we have available the original settings and the block type name. So first thing we do, we check if this is actually a heading block. Uh, these filters are going to go through all the blocks. So if we don't do this check, we are going to add some random controls and settings for all the blocks. And well, if it's not a heading, even they just return the original settings. Otherwise, we start adding our attributes. So here we add an attribute for AMP text. We are going to create a toggle for that, and we set it to false by default. And we add all the other settings that we want the same way, so the minimum font size, maximum font size, and height. So now we have the settings configured. Now we also want to actually show those to the editor. And for this, we use the editor block edit filter. Here we have available the original block edit component and the properties. Again, we check here, okay, if this is not a heading, we're just going to return the original block edit. Otherwise, we start putting together our controls that we're going to show to the editor. So the first one that we create here is a toggle. This is going to be for the empty text. We're going to set the label, the current value, the behavior. And now we add the other, uh, other controls. But in this case, we do this only if the editor has actually chosen to opt in for using Amphit text. If, um, if the user doesn't want to use this, then there's no reason to show all the controls to the user. So if the editor has chosen Amphit text, then we add all the other controls the same way. Once that's done, we return all these controls together with the original block edit. And uh, that's quite important to add the original block edit because that includes all the previously existing controls plus how the block is actually displayed. Okay? And now we have the settings, we have the visual controls, and now we actually, we also want to modify what gets saved into the post content. So for that, we use the get save element. Here we have available the original element, the block type object, and the attributes as the editor has saved them. So now in, in addition to checking if this is actually a heading block, we also want to make sure that we modify the content only if the user actually has opted in for using Amphi text. Otherwise, there is no need to make any changes at all. And if the user had opted in, 
Then we start putting together our attributes for the Amphit text element that we are creating. So the first thing we do here is that we add the original element as the child of the Amphit text because we're going to wrap Amphit text around it. And after that, we add all the other attributes exactly as we expect them to show up in the post content because this is um, actually going, filtering what gets saved into post content. And then we create the new Amphit text element with all the attributes that we assigned to it. So that's it with the Amphit text. And I'm now going to show you a short video about how it actually works in action. I hope it plays as well. All right. So this is now a heading, and this does not have Amphit text assigned to it. This is just heading without any settings. So now when we go to the heading block, we can see that there is the Amphit text control. And this is the only control that shows up by default. When we toggle it, we can see all the other attributes that we added as well. So we're going to set the height where we want and adjust the sizes. And then we are going to save the post and see how it looks like now. And this is how it looks like now. So it used to be smaller than the heading one, but now you can see it's much larger. OK. So the next example is going to be based on gallery shortcode. Uh, there is actually no specific block for gallery shortcode, but there is a block for shortcode. And um, you can, well, use gallery shortcode with that as well. So here what we wanted to do was to um, allow the user to use AMP carousel instead of displaying the default WordPress gallery. And this would display a carousel instead of default WordPress gallery. Uh, here we would want to add just one toggle so the user can um, choose if they want to use the carousel or not. And again, the first thing, we register as settings. Here we have now, uh, we use the same filter register block type. Again, first of all, we check if this is a short code block. Then we add the AMP carousel toggle, which is going to be, well, a boolean again, meaning it can be only false or true. Then we return the settings. So now when we have the settings, we also want to add a visible control. For that, again, we use the same filter, editor block edit. Again, we check if this is not a short code. We're not doing anything, just return the original component. And otherwise, um, we add the control. But what we do now here is that since we only want to add this control, in case it's a gallery short code, so we actually check, did the editor actually type in gallery? And if they did not, then we just return the original component. Otherwise, we add the inspector controls with carousel toggle, exactly the same way as we added in a previous example. And then we return the original together with the custom inspector controls. So now we again have a register settings. We have added visual toggle to the editor. Now we want to modify what gets saved into the post content. And for that, again, we use the blocks get save element filter. Again, we check if this is not a short code, then we just return the original. Otherwise, we add our custom handling. And um, here again, we check first, OK, is this a gallery short code at all? Has the user typed in gallery? And if they actually chose uh, to use AMP carousel, then we check if the AMP carousel was previously set to false, then we remove this. So how we set it up was so that uh, if there is no attribute for AMP carousel set in a shortcode, this means that it's true. And well, probably most of you have used shortcodes, so you know that the uh, attributes just get typed into the shortcode as text. So uh, this is what we are processing here as well. And otherwise, we check, OK, if you are not using AMP carousel, but if it's not set to false, then we add this as false. 
And the last thing we do here is we check, okay, did we actually make any changes to the original text that was saved? And only if we did, then we create the new text element. So here is also a fourth part uh, that I'm briefly going to show uh, is the processing from PHP side because we did add this attribute, but this is not a default attribute for, for the gallery. So, so we also want to make sure that it actually gets used. Uh, for this, we use the post gallery filter to add a function maybe overwrites the gallery. And we have um, available the HTML parameter which, which includes the original output um, and the shortcode attributes. So here we check that, okay, if the AMP carousel was not set um, or it was set to false, then we return the original output. And otherwise, we add our own log logic to use AMP carousel and we return this instead. And that's it again. So I'm going to show you the video again. All right, so here I'm adding a shortcode block. As you can see, it doesn't have any settings by default. And when I type in gallery, then the settings appear added by the AMP for WordPress plugin. So at first I'm just going to show the default WordPress gallery. I'm gonna add some images. We're gonna save the post and see how it looks like. So this is now the default WordPress gallery, just three images in a row. Now we go back and choose to display as AMP carousel. And now, as you can see, this displays as carousel instead, leveraging the AMP carousel component. Okay. So the third and the last example is going to be about AMP Lightbox. And uh, here, what we wanted to do was to add option to display an image as Lightbox and for all the image blocks. So this would mean the image block, the gallery block, and also the um, gallery shortcode block. And I'm going to show you this example based on image block. So here it's how it's going to look like um, once we're done. So we are again going to add just one toggle for optionally show us with lightbox effect. And again, the first thing we need to do is register the settings. So here again, we use exactly the same filter, blocks register block type. Again, we check if this, this is actually an image block, only then we add the AMP lightbox attribute. And this is going to be a toggle again, so this means type boolean, only true or false. And then return the settings. So now we have settings registered. Now we also want to add the visible controls. For that again, we use the editor block edit filter. Again, we check if this is not an image, we just return the original block edit component. And then we add our custom control. I'm not going to show you this in detail because this is exactly the same as in case of previous examples. And now we also want to modify what gets saved into the post content. And how we set up this is um, by adding a custom attribute to the block that we would later process in PHP, so this time we, we don't need to filter everything that gets saved into the block content, we just want to add one attribute, and for that we use the get save content extra props filter. So here we have available the properties, the block type object, object and the attributes that the editor has um, saved for this specific block. And then we start putting together our attributes, um, we check that if the AMP light box is set, then we add this attribute exactly as it's supposed to show up in the post content. And then we return the custom attributes plus the already previously existing properties. And this is also important because otherwise we would lose everything else. 
And uh, the fourth part here is also uh, to actually process this attribute in PHP. I'm not going to show you this right now because this is not at all Gutenberg related. And we are ready again. So I'm going to show you a video again. So this is now an image um, block. It doesn't have any settings at all. It's just added image. It doesn't link to anywhere. Nothing happens when we click on it. Now we go to the image block and we can see the AMP settings added by the plugin. And we are going to choose to use the lightbox effect. So this is the same post now with the image and now when we click on it, it actually displays as lightbox. This is not completely centered. Uh, I can see that just right because uh, I recorded the video not completely centered. Okay, so that's it with the examples. Um, I guess if you have uh, never developed with uh, Gutenberg before, then this might have been confusing or too many details to remember. Uh, but I'm sure that you notice that there is a lot of repetition, meaning that actually the, um, um, the base logic for extending the blocks is uh, generally kind of the same. So a few words about the challenges that we had. So, well, first, first challenge was definitely to figure out how all this works at all, because uh, when we started developing it, it was quite early this year. And at that moment, there was kind of um, almost no documentation about how to do it. And there also, well, didn't exist real life examples of how this actually works. So it took us some time to figure it out. But uh, once we did understood how the filters for blocks work and which to use and then to use, then it was uh, quite straightforward. And um, now I believe that the documentation for filters, it's uh, quite detailed. So if you're interested, then go check it out. And another thing to uh, consider when extending Gutenberg blocks is that, um, well, Basically, how we wanted to implement the plugin was so that if the plugin is activated and if we do changes and then if you would deactivate the plugin, then nothing uh, would change for the user or nothing would break for the user, so to say. But every time when you load the editor, there's a background uh, check happening, which is checking if there are inconsistencies between what's currently saved into the post content compared to what would get saved by the currently existing logic for save, saving. So since we filter the, what gets saved into post content, then if, um, if you, after doing that, if you deactivate the plugin, then this is what you're gonna see. And this is the same heading, uh, exactly the same example that I just showed you with the amphit text uh, set to true. So if we do that, and then we go and deactivate the plugin, then this is what's going to happen. So at first, uh, we were figuring out all kinds of ways of how to get around this or how not to have this. But then we actually received the information that this is completely OK. And if you just click Convert to Blocks, then the default block is going to be restored. And this works for the core blocks. So, but that's just something to be aware of. And well, uh, for me, by far the most frustrating thing is, uh, has been the weekly updates by Gutenberg, which um, more than wished to break the plugin. So it's, um, it's unbelievable how many times we had to re-go some things. Is a method changed or a class name changed or something wasn't there anymore, was removed or replaced or I don't know. Uh, I think the <clears throat> previous four weeks, absolutely every single week after update, there was something wrong. So <clears throat> it's, uh, well, it's definitely good to test everything all the time, but if you're working on large projects and multiple projects, then you can't stand, um, it's hard to spend like half of a day every day just testing if the latest update now 
broke something or not. So the, the good news is that uh, if something breaks, then it's fortunately usually just the back end because, well, the post content already is what it is. Uh, so the front end experience is uh, going to stay the same. But it's still super frustrating for a developer to go to after update, go to the um, post editing page, and then you just see a white screen, and you're going to start thinking, out, OK, I'm going to go through all the GitHub uh, last release to see what kind of changes were made to figure out how to make this work again. Fortunately, or I, at least I hope so now, when Gutenberg is actually part of WordPress, um, then it should be more stable. Yeah, I hope so, at least. <laughs> uh, so a few thoughts uh, to thoughts and conclusions. So, well, first of all, as you probably saw, then the logic for extending the blocks is quite similar. There are actually more filters available, but these were the ones that we mostly needed for extending the blocks. Uh, and of course, although this presentation specifically is based on the adding AMP features, then actually all this is applicable for anything else you might want to add. Um, and the last thought is that, yes, although it can be super frustrating sometimes with Gutenberg, but uh, the more I worked with it, the more I actually see that it does uh, it does offer like really cool opportunities for a developer to add really awesome features, and by this also enhance the experience for editors. And that was it. Ah, oh, here are a few links as well. So the first row here is just a sample plugin. It's still not production ready, and I hope it hasn't broken meanwhile, but uh, you can check it out just to see how to extend um, a block. So the second line here is a link to the plugin. And if you're interested, then you can go to the plugin site and there should be a link to GitHub repo. So if you go there, if you're interested, you can see all these examples in real life and actually functional. That's it. Thank you. Do you have to do something? <laughs> we can do questions if anyone has any. There's two mics in the center here. You're more than welcome to come up and pose questions. Your plugin is like a new plugin, right? So if there's like the old AMP plugin, do we need to remove it? I have like a different AMP plugin on my website and I was wondering if like um, so I have a plugin on my website that's already an AMP plugin do I need to remove that plugin and start using your plugin instead or could I find another way to keep one or what how does this plugin kind of like apply to um, like a WordPress site without Gutenberg or does it it works very well with Gutenberg uh, without Gutenberg I mean <laughs> what I um as I mentioned before as well, then the Gutenberg part is just a tiny part of the plugin. So probably if you already have an AMP plugin, then it would be better to remove this and add AMP for WordPress plugin instead because the, it's... Yeah, the plugin I have now is AMP Supremacy. So I was just wondering if it was like going to affect it or anything. I don't know if you know. I'm not familiar with this plugin. Yeah. That's okay. Yes. Are you familiar? <laughs> Fair Thank you, Alberta. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so the image block with AMP settings, um, is there a way to make that so that that's going to always be the default, like Lightbox's default toggled on and AMP is toggled on? when you try to use it? Uh, can you ask that again? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, forgive my ignorance, too. Uh, is there, so the point you were showing with the image, um, is there a way to make it so that, let's say, the 
uh, light box is always toggled on when you try to create a new block with that? No, it's not at this moment. Yeah, as I heard from Pagli, that you could create an extension plugin yourself and do that. 